What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? You already know what time it is. Chase that big podcast. She did. I have a very, very special guest today. A legend, Woodtown legend. No one other than himself, Mr. Jim. What's happening? Not much, man. You good? You good? Yes, Lord, man. Hey, I'm I'm great, man. You've been extremely hospitable, Mr. Jim. You done pulled me up on the do say. What's this, the do say? Yes, sir. <laughs> Shit, we on the do say right now. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I am feeling good, man. I'm I'm I'm, I'm honored to be able to have you on today, man. And just be able to chop it up with Mr. Jim, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So 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 Mr. Jim, we are at your studio. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's where it all happens, yet, you know what I'm saying? This is where the magic is made? It's where the magic is made. Crack is cooked. Already. <laughs> Whip game proper? Yeah. I like that picture in the background of you, Mr. Jim. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Where, that, where did that photo come from? Man, actually, uh, I was in one of my studios downtown, man, and I just was taking a little different photos, man, and, um, I had the thing on automatic snap from remote control. And it's just one of the faces it caught, man. And uh, as I looked at it, I said, man, that face said a thousand words, man. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, somebody got that painted up for me. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up, man. I like that. That's a dope pick. Appreciate you. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Mr. Jim, man, a lot of people are familiar with you and a lot of people are not. So, give me the background on... Mr. Jim, man, where, where where you from? Woodtown, Dallas, Texas, Woodtown, Texas. Yes, Woodtown, Texas. Yeah, man, W up, man, you know what I'm saying? Veteran, you know what I'm saying? Those that know them, they know those that don't, we ain't worried about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did, you, did you attend Quad High School? I did, man. Okay. Yeah, man, I went to Quad OCC, I went there, man. I think that was in the 90s when you was in there, right? Yes, sir. What year? 94, 94, 94. Yeah, man. Okay, so that was that was after the the the, the Jesse Armstead days and all. Yeah, that yeah. Afterwards, you know, after the uh, the robberies and all that other stuff, and Cass was doing. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. I went to old Carter, man. You know, shout out to Carter. Already, already. So. I want to say you started rapping with 86. 86, exactly. That's 35 years. Yeah, Mr. man. Jim. Yeah. <laughs> 35 years. I've never spoken with someone who has been a pioneer in the game for over three decades. Yeah. So I know that you've seen a lot, but before we get into all the things that you've seen and, and, and currently how you view the game, Yeah. you know, um, you know, what what started you to rap it? I think it had something to do with like a family member or something like that. It did. What it did. It? Well, you know, my I always been a storyteller. You know, what I'm saying in my head, but I never put it down on. I used to lie, so of course I was a storyteller. You know, stay out of trouble. But my older sister named Shantanya, man, her and her friends, they used to you know do the little rap thing way back in the days when like LL and Kumo did and it was popping and all that. They used to, you know, do the little ABC raps or whatever. And I used to uh, mock them. My cousin named Shayla used to rap too. I used to mock them. And then I told my sister, I said, you know, I'm, I'm a rap too. Yeah. And she was like, nah, you can't rap. You ain't gonna be able to rap. This ain't, ain't for you, basically. Yeah. And I always been one to go against the grain, man. So I stayed in the house, and I well, let me backtrack. My sister said I'm not gonna be able to rap. I used to try and freestyle. I used to get into trouble a lot. Okay. And so I used to get suspended. I'm talking about like fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and my mother. My mother is a writer as well, you know, she's still right. Not music, she just write, you know, just write what's on her mind. But uh, she used to make me stay in the house, you know, instead of letting me go outside. And she made me sit in my room and write about what I did at school to get suspended. You know, tell her why I did what I did. And I sat in that corner every day just writing and writing. Then I just started putting it into ending it with rhyme words, you know, and I just, I kept moving like that. And then uh, when I first got my, 
my first little rhyme down to memorize. I went to my sister and her girls with it, like, I can rap. She like, nah, you can't. So I rapped. And everybody was like, oh, you look really good rap. And then, you know, from there, man, I just I just kept writing, you know. But I was never writing to a beat then. I was just writing, yeah. you know. And I just always rhymed my, my N-words. It might didn't make sense in between, but I made sure my N-words rhymed. Then, you know, later on, well, you know, stuff that you go through growing up, you know, I started putting substance to my flow and everything like that. But that's how I started rapping. Yeah. Alrighty, that's what's up. So it was pretty much like almost like writing as a result of a consequence, more like a consequence. Yes, anything. sir. Yes, sir. But as a result of you fucking with it, you was able to take it and turn it into something else outside of what it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, that's what's up. Yeah, man. So, so you started rapping, and at what point did you kind of, you know, see it being something that could be like another avenue for you, like something that you could do professionally? When I, I mean, like, you know, some of my favorite rappers coming up, you know, I used to watch, like, the Busy Beats, Kumo D's, Biz Marquis, you know, just... And this is an OG in the game we're talking to, y'all, so he might be talking over some of y'all youngsters' heads. Yeah, yeah. His favorite artists, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? But, like, like, um, it was guys like that who had a lot of storyboards to their music, and I used to mimic that, but within my groove of how I was moving on the day-to-day. -day. And then, uh, I'll be honest with you, man, I really didn't see, like, it becoming a profession, profession until, like, the late 90s. Because when I was doing it, I was doing it to prove something. I fell in love with it, and it just was a passion. So before I knew about uh, Big Booty Chicks and videos or or phantoms and gold chains and rings and chicks and all this stuff. I was just in love with the format of being able to create. I was just in love with that. So it wasn't until like the late 90s when I started getting around other guys that was taking me to studios. And then I would run into somebody that I might have seen on TV and in person and seen them pull up in you know, like a, a nice Benz or seeing them with the pretty girls and shit like that. And that's what motivated me to say, well, shit, if, if they sitting right here in my face and, and they got what they got, then shit, hell, I rap too. So maybe I can go for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, really, that's what's up. So, you know, I know that, I know that you've been in the game for over three decades. So at what point, because I'm sure – You've identified that the game transitions and, 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 you know, sounds change, content change. Yeah. You know, at what point did you start to see the game transition to a, you know, from to a different perspective than where it was when you started? Well, being that I'm from Dallas, man, I never seen it. To be honest with you, um, like I've been in Dallas all my life, but I moved to Houston I moved to Houston in about 98-ish, 99. And when I got to Houston, first of all, being that I'm from Dallas, every cat I ran across back in the 90s, correct. I mean, every cat I ran across. You know, you run a Carol's cast today, you'd be like, eh, oh, okay, no, Every cat I crossed in Dallas when I used to hang downtown and rap, could rap. I mean, spit. Whether they was talking about some pimp shit, some gangster shit, some dope shit, some life shit, some church shit, niggas could rap. No shade, but I moved to Houston and uh, niggas rap different, you know what I'm saying, than what I was used to. And I was, you know... Just me personally, I was like, nah, this ain't rap, you know what I'm saying? This easy with y'all do, you know what I'm saying? This ain't rap. Now, I ran into a couple cats in Houston that, that spit that shit, but for the majority, I was just like, man, this ain't rap, you know what I'm saying? And then when I moved back to Dallas, because I'm down there fighting niggas in Houston, like, y'all niggas can't rap. Niggas in Dallas, the truth. I come back to Dallas. Yeah, nigga, I ran across sound like H-Tag, nigga. Yeah. Niggas was coming down and popping wow. trunks. 
Well, but let me ask you, let me ask you a question, Mr. Jim. Why is that? Like, why, why do? I'm not gonna say everybody because I don't like to, I don't like to generalize everybody, but I like to talk majority and minority. So why does the majority, you know, of artists in Dallas, it seems like all throughout the times of, 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 of rap, why do they always find themselves following the trend of another city rather than what some people in the past have talked about, Dallas finding their own identity? Why is that? Why are we so... A, f a following city? Yeah, why we, why we follow the trend so much? Niggas be trying to get on, bro, instead of sticking to their own format. What, what people fail to realize... It's a lot of people, it's a lot of superstars that followed the Dallas format back in the days. Dallas always been strong, but they wasn't strong in numbers. Niggas, niggas ain't never been for each other. It's everybody been for self. So if it seemed like somebody over here popping, then that's what they going to follow because they trying to pop like them. You know what I'm saying? And, and niggas scared of the grind or niggas scared of the the work. You know what I'm saying? With shit, if that nigga popping, that nigga popping, that nigga popping, let me jump on, on on that train and maybe I could pop and then a nigga will pop. So then the next nigga will see him pop. And niggas just be following. It's the same thing with Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? They was doing all this, you know, like, like the, the boogie music and booty music and all this shit. Niggas from here started doing that shit. But the sad thing about it is, like, niggas here don't stick together. So, a nigga come here, steal your style, steal your song, do whatever, go somewhere else and blow up, and you sitting here looking dumb and mad. Because you niggas follow. And and I think a lot of times that, hurt, that hurts us as artists because we lose sight of who we are as an artist. Yes, sir. Our story to tell. We rather tell someone else's story and tell it the way that they tell it rather than find our own identity. Yeah, yeah, right. So, so describe for me the state of hip hop in Dallas right now. The state of hip hop, the current situation of hip hop in Dallas. What's the current state from your perspective? Everybody just want to be the next. Everybody want to be the next, bro. And then. Kind of going back to the following situation, you know what I'm saying? With uh, I don't really like to speak on the shit, but like you know what I'm saying, you got you have the the artists in Dallas who got heavy names, but a lot of these cats in Dallas who got heavy names, I don't really speak niggas' name, but who got heavy names, niggas follow their format, and they format not always on rap shit. <laughs> We on street shit. You know what I mean? We're all street niggas, bro. But some days, nigga got to grow up. And nigga got to understand the difference between moving forward and moving backwards. Business and street shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm all for business. Nigga pull me out the element. You know what I'm saying? That's another story. But uh, right now, man, I just think niggas trying to be... The Knicks. All right, you know, fuck it. You know, you got your Trap Boy Freddy's, you got your Yellow Beezes, you got your Mo 3's, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and like the Mo 3, nigga, what well, height? Yeah. He gone. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, 3. Niggas trying to follow that trend. Niggas can't be themselves, bro. Niggas trying to follow that trend. But I'm like, you know, that was that man's stamp. Niggas can't find their own stamp, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got the Trap Boy Freddy's now. Everybody know what that is, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Trap Boy Freddy, but everybody want to walk that lane. Everybody can't walk that lane. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to rap, rap. If you're going to be a street nigga, be a street nigga. Do you think politics ever plays a role in, 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 in the city, the culture of the music, and and, and, and quote-unquote getting on and all these different type of things? Do you think it's ever politics? It is politics, you know what I'm saying? Uh, as far as me, I'll say this. So I'm a versatile artist. You know, I can rap about anything, any subject. I have a, I have a format. I have a lane that I walk. But it's, it's, it's. I'm, I'm an artist, so I can talk about anything. But anybody that knows Gene knows, I have a certain lane or a type of subject I speak on. Everything else is chess for me. But uh, the politics in it is negative, negative shit. 
nigga, this shit gonna always blow. You know what I'm saying? I walked 3,000 old ladies across the street. Nobody noticed. But beat them old ladies up or do something crazy. Kick one lady across the street. That shit on World Star. That shit on the news. That shit on every blog, every pop. Miss Jen kick an old lady across the street. But y'all ain't talking about them 3,000 ladies I walked across the street. So the politics of it is, you know, negative. People promote negative shit. And it's like that's why most of the niggas, most of the young niggas out here on dumb shit. Because a nigga can... A nigga can go viral on dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? But a nigga out here on some real shit or whatever, it's like a nigga be overlooked. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, there's a lot of politics in it. I think a lot of times, G and me personally, I think the reason that a lot of artists get stuck in a certain situation is because of their desire and what they want to get out of the game. Meaning money, you know, some cars, some jewelry. Yeah. You know, different stuff like that. And they don't understand the business aspect of it. So, for example, like with you, right? You got a label, right? Yes, sir. Is your label, has it been established as an actual business entity? Yes. If you don't mind me asking, what type of uh, business structure is it? Like, is it a... Is it a a sole proprietary, is it an LLC, is it a, is it a corporation, incorporated? Uh, I'm LLC. Uh, I have two businesses, like, you know what I'm saying, within my music. LLC and so, you know what I'm saying, established since 2006, registered in the books, on paper. I'm not just out here yelling at some shit. That's big, right? Because I see a lot of people do that, Mr. Jen. A lot of people will be on some, yeah, man, I'm Get Money Records, Get Money Entertainment, but they just yelling shit like ain't nothing established. Yeah. You know, just some shit, you know, you came up with a name, it sound good, you like it, and, you know, we're going to run with it. But as far as establishing a business, artists don't do that. Right. What is it that scares artists away from the business aspect of what they're doing and understanding that them themselves is a business? Most of them ain't taking the time to understand that your name or whatever is a brand, is a business. So a lot of cats is on some right now shit. I can go out here and get this money right now. I ain't worried about tomorrow. So that's why you see most cats, they be popping right now. They at every show, they on every card, every concert, at the car shows, they here, they there, they there. But they getting like right now cash money or this or that. They ain't got no longevity in it. They don't they don't understand when you LLC'd up, when you when you uh in co corporation, you a business, bro. That's longevity money. You're going to get right now money. You're going to get residual money. These niggas ain't getting residual money. You know what I'm saying? They get right now money. They go buy them some chains and cars and shit. And then tomorrow, these niggas got to sell this shit. Mm -hmm. I agree. I um, For me, I try to explain to artists that, let's say an artist go to the club, right, and they're promoting and they throwing money at the strip club. Tell a lot of artists, man, if you got your business, which is nothing but a piece of paper, acknowledged by the state, whatever state you in, that money that you throw, let's say you got it out of your account. Mm -hmm. Put a memo note on it. Hey, $300, club promotion, right? Go throw that $300 at the club and do whatever you're going to do. At the end of the year, when it's time to do your taxes, so taxable. what you need to do is you need to go through all of your transactions on your business statement. That three hundred dollars that you threw at the club for promotion purposes, guess what? That's a write off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. The money you spend on the beats, the money you spend on recording, the equipment that you buy if you're self contained, your clothes that you buy for shows, appearances, your your, your trips, video your shoes, your, your, your gas, trips, your, gas your food, all that, your haircut. All these different expenses that you're spending money on to get ready for what it is that you're doing are tax write-offs yes. if you have your business established. Yep. And a lot of people don't know, LLC, I'll let you tell them, Mr. G, how much does an LLC cost to file with the state of Texas? I'm going to say uh, $300. 300? 
Three hundred dollars, man. Three hundred dollars to file your LLC. And you, nigga, you, you niggas go spend that on tennis shoes. On tennis shoes, a pair of Jordans, and you could have wrote. Look, if you instead of buying a pair of J's, establish your business, then go buy a pair of J's and write them J's out that you just bought. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the niggas be giving you niggas free games. Free you niggas game. Niggas be taking heat, bro. Free game. Damn, buying the Jordans right now. You gonna buy the next pair that come out? Look. Spend three hundred dollars. Register your business online with the state of Texas, Secretary of the State. Go on to the IRS.gov website. Get your EIN. That's free. Easy. And you are established. You established. Then buy the J's and write the J's out. And the outfit <laughs> that go with the J's. Damn it, buy the whole damn Jordan outfit. Shit. Yeah, man. Get out of this shit, back, bro. And, shit. and I think that a lot of times because they don't understand it. They write it off. They don't want to hear it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They just want to go, man, shit, I'm trying to go fuck this bitch and do this show so everybody can see what the fuck I'm doing and scream my name and shit. Yeah. I just think their priorities sometimes are misconstrued, if that makes sense. Yeah, real talk. So, so, so not only are you an artist with your own record label, but what other type of businesses do you have? Man, I got food and beverage business, licensed bartender, uh, goddamn delivery business, you know what I'm saying? I got a print shop, production company, videography company, uh, shit, man. I got my hands in a lot of things, man. Entrepreneur, you It sounds like multiple streams of revenue to me, Jim. And, and, and it's working. Yeah. You hear me? A lot of people, this the difference, you know. I, I, I tell some people, you know, you get your handful of seeds, you know, and you throw them in the yard. You can't watch your every last one of them fall. Mm -hmm. So some of them going to get watered. So me, I start out with one. And when it's right, I move to the next. See, a lot of people want to do everything at once, man. But, you know, I mean, you can't, you can't run multiple businesses. Uh, that you start up the same day. You got to nourish your first business. And when that's established and right and you comfortable and you know it's good and you got people in position, you move to your next business. You know what I'm saying? That's where a lot of people feel it, man. They want to be boss of everything. I'm comfortable with one thing, but I ain't got one thing because I surpassed that. But I'm saying when I just had one business, I worked the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah. Already. One of the things that... Uh that I thought was really, really impressive um, was your wife sent me um, like your entire package, like the whole entire artist package. I'm talking about electronic press kit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Some video footage, some photos, the bio was in the EPK. Yeah. Like, like you can tell, Jen, that you a seasoned OG veteran in this game. Right. You know what I'm saying? Niggas and ain't even got EPKs no you more. You feel me? Like, I, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. Like, I, I I, don't have it in the format of how you had it where it was like a six, I think it was like a five or six page outline yeah. of each thing. I don't have it like that. I do use my website for my EPK because I do have my bio on there. I have my music on there, my links, my social media links. Mm -hmm. So that kind of substitutes for me, but... To actually have it how you had it, I've I I it's, I don't think I've ever seen it like that. Right. So so kudos to you on that. Appreciate you. Your 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 wife um, does she like manage you or she kind of helps out with it? Like does she wear a hat in the business? Man, or? look look look. Uh, I'm the CEO of the label. She the president of the label, and I kind of. I put a jacket on her that in the beginning she was like, you know, I don't want to wear this jacket, you know, but she, not since the beginning, because of course I've been rapping since 86, but uh, she been here for 20 years, and I say the first 10 years, she seen me work with multiple managers, multiple this, that, and the other, where I'm getting fucked over. I'm getting fucked over. I'm getting fucked over. And she have always voiced that music that's your thing. I got aspirations, this, that, and the other. And I've never been like, 
Well, fuck what you want, it's about me. It ain't never been me. I've always told her to chase her shit. She's always told me to chase mine. But through the years, she, she, she's she been at every show, every meeting. She's seen the ups, the downs. And then, you know, one day she was just like, man, you know what? I know you. Like, I really know what you're going to make in the studio. I know what you're looking for. I could never fuck over you. You know what I'm saying? And shit, she just... When she was talking that old, I'm on board shit, like I said, 20 years we've been together. First 10 years, it was just like me by myself. You know what I mean? She came to support shows I done this and then the other. But as far as the business, it was just like, you know, you're on your own. And I'll be honest with you, you know what I mean? With this business shit comes growth. 10 years ago, did I know the shit I know right now? Hell no. So... I was in a lot of situations where I can get screwed over. Or a nigga shoot me some shit that sounded real good at the time. I might have been iffy on it, but I might have went with it. And she was always one like, well, man, if you feel iffy, iffy about some shit, don't go with it. Follow your first mind. And she the motherfucker that's going to follow her first mind. I'll be honest with you. Even to this day, I give people the benefit of the doubt. She don't. I'd be like, well, you know, dude, sound good. She'd be like, nah, fuck that. We're doing research. You know, up, oh, found some shit. We ain't fucking with him. You know what I'm saying? Nigga like me done gave a nigga benefit of that, learned the hard way. But she, she didn't carry that weight that I needed her to carry so I could focus on what I do as a as an artist. You know what I'm saying? So shit. Hell yeah, she a manager. My what was, manager. What was it that broke the camels back in a sense to, to make her say, you know what? Jen, I'm finna go on and throw this hat on, man. I'm finna go on and help out. Meeting with people. You know, meeting with different... Because I always was looking for, like, a manager. Man, I just met with a motherfucker a couple weeks ago on the most fool shit in the world. And I be peeping shit. But the funny thing is, before I could tell her the shit I peep... She done peeped it already. She done told me. So she just like, nah, man. Can't nobody be your manager because ain't nobody going to have you in their best interest like I am. I mean, she know me, you know, on a personal level, but on my music, she, she done been there. Yeah. She know everything as far as what I might file for and what I won't file for. And what I might file for, she ain't going to file for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what broke the camel's back was motherfuckers fucking over gin. And she like, nah, if I let another motherfucker fuck up with Jen, I'm going to be in their life on some other shit. So, mm -hmm. so we're going to go from here. We just partnered in everything. You know what I'm saying? Not just the marriage. We partnered in everything. And shit. I do my music. She do the business. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that you've seen a lot of success since that, that venture together, huh? Hell yes. Uh -huh. More success than I've seen on my own or... Uh, uh, I ain't always been a CEO. I ain't always on the record label. I ain't been on other labels, and I tell you this here, so much better on this side, Jack. Yeah. I really, yeah, two heads are definitely better than one. You can always accomplish, you know, more when you got more than one person moving in the same direction and everybody playing that position. Yo. So, currently right now, I know that you just dropped a single called New Money, oh, which yeah. features Fat Pimp. And it features Mr. Pookie. Yes, sir. What brought, what brought that? Uh, what brought that uh, single together? Man, if you want to be, well, shit, this is an honest interview. We're gonna be out of the way honest. You know what I'm saying? Mean. I got a. I fuck with a lot of rap cats, niggas that I consider just music partners, and niggas I consider drinking partners. But we still do music. You know what I'm saying? So them are friends. But man, new money, dog. I actually got that produced about a year ago, and uh, I wrote the hook that y'all hear, and I wrote my verse that y'all hear, and I left it alone. Like I go back to it, and man, I got so much music, bro. I dug in the vault, and I found that motherfucker. So I said, you know what? I'm going to reach out to some cats that I, that I know are rock this bitch. 
that, yeah. I, that I know for a fact. Shout out to Fat Pimp and Miss Poop. Yeah, but before that, and I'm giving you the story on it. You know what I'm saying? How I come about the single, right? Okay. That was the question. Okay. Before the Fat Pimp. Before the mm, Miss okay. Yeah, so I'm breaking it down. Before the Fat Pimp. Because, see, look, I fuck with Fat Pimp, but we ain't never been sit down buddies. I mean, we fuck with each other now. Yeah. Met him through my, my, my old artist, C. Strugs, Rest in Peace. But, uh, that was that. And then the Mr. Pookie situation. And they grew up listening to Pookie, but we ain't never sat down with each other. Mm -hmm. So they wasn't even on my radar on this song. Mm. I reached out to other cats who I consider real rap partners, real genuine good guys, you know yeah. what I'm saying, that I did work with before. So I actually reached out to my nigga Money Banks and my nigga uh, QP. Okay. You know, and QP was like, I'm with it. Money Banks was like, I'm with it. And so in my head, I'm like, yeah, shit, this is another classic. Yeah. Uh, them niggas was just taking too long. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I fuck with y'all, but they was just taking too long. Yeah. So then I reached out to my nigga, uh, Big Lack, and he was like, I'm with it. And I'm like chasing niggas, you know what I'm saying? So right, right. I'm, I'm hitting niggas up like, bro, you get the track? Uh, you drop your verse? Uh, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't moving that way. So I said, you know what? I don't, I don't, if a nigga send me some shit, I'm on it. And I don't want this shit getting mixed to screw. I fuck with these niggas still to this day. Yeah. Niggas just don't move as fast as I move, bro. Yeah. And, and when I say as fast, I ain't talking about giving a nigga one week. I'm talking about nigga two months. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Niggas just ain't moved. So shit, I reached out to Fat Pimp like like just for scenario. I reached out to Fat Pimp like on a Thursday, Wednesday. He was like, "Nigga, I'm on it." Yeah, yeah. I reached, you know, what I'm saying I reached out to Mr. Pookie. Mr. Me and Mr. Pookie had never met. I had met Fat Pimp. He been in my studio, yeah. but me and Mr. Pookie had never met. Yeah. Reached out to the nigga on like Facebook or IG. Nigga was like, "Send the track." Yeah, I'm on it. Nigga, in less than two weeks, nigga, the song was done. Yeah. Nigga, Mr. Pook was sitting right here. Yeah. Sitting in that chair where you sitting at. You know what I'm saying? Blowing his situation. I'm sipping on my whiskey. We yada, yada, conversing. Boof, bam, bam, nigga. Shit, when you ready for the video, holler. Yeah. That easy, bro. Same thing with Fat Pimp. True niggas, bro. And, and so when, when I, when I uh, put the shit out there, some of them same guys is like, damn, it's fucked up. Not really, though, you know. So that's how that song came about. And, and you know, they always say sometimes, man, shit don't work out the first time. It's better when it come back around. And to be honest with you, with the, with, with, with the way the song going and everything, and I'm listening to it, I'm like, shit, nigga, it's so perfect. Yeah. Should have been first choice anyway. This whole perfect. Yeah. But shout out to my nigga Money Banks and QP. You know I fuck with these niggas. Big lag. I still fuck with these niggas. Niggas just didn't move as fast as I move. Yeah. And it's cool. I mean, you know, shit happens. You know what I'm saying? You know, it ain't necessarily. You know, I'll probably. You know, people won't necessarily take nothing as personal. But you know, shit happens, man. And you know, at the end of the day, as long as everything works out and the track is able to get the success that you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? What you envision is what's most important. Yeah. Like you said, man, I think it's important to understand that just because things don't work out at a certain time doesn't mean that it's not going to work out or in another situation. Right. Just at that particular time, it was just something else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Absolutely. So, so you got new money, you pushing new money. That's the single that you're working on. Is there anything else that you're working on and are you working with any other artists on anything? Yeah, yeah, man. I got uh, my girl, uh, my second single out of the album. She gonna be called Fake Shit, and uh, that's what my uh, my sister in rap, Butter Go Harder, one one of the tough chicks out of Dallas. You know what I'm saying? Like real tough. Butter Go Harder. You have to look up if you ain't heard of. Her. Oh. But uh, yeah, we got a single together. Um, my nigga Bushy, Mr. Old Cliff. I got him on the uh. Some shit. Nigga named Tingo, my nigga El Trey, these cats you, you might have heard of, might not have, but you know, when the album drop, you're gonna be like, ooh, these niggas heavy. You know what I'm saying? Um I got a couple cats on some shit, you know, I'm um I got some prospects too, you know what I'm saying? I'm 
the shop is some shit with Big Tuck right now and uh, Honey Banks. You know, it ain't solidified right now, but we got some shit in the making. If it, if it happen, it happen. If it don't, it don't. But uh, for sure, for sure, Fat Pimp, Mr. Pookie, um, my nigga Bushy, which is Mr. Oak Cliff, uh, got some castle and shit. Some, some strong features on the shit. Not a lot. But some strong features, you know. Butter go hard to shout out. Already, already, already. So, real quick, I'm gonna just ask you a couple of questions. Give me a quick answer. See what you think on the tip of your toes, okay? All right, here we go. Is Section Eight a good program, or is it a bad program for people in general? Both. <laughs> it's hard to just say bad or good. Oh, man. Uh, some people misuse the shit out of it. Some people been on that bitch for 40 <laughs> years. I, I believe that Section 8 is a, a transition. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get from where you at. You need that help. Get where you need to be. Move the fuck on. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Um, Food stamps. And I'm not talking about the, 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 the old grandmothers or grandfathers, somebody who can't do for themselves, who really <laughs> need this. I'm talking about just in general. You know what I mean, Mr. Mr. Gene. You know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah, Food stamps, is it a good thing for us or a bad thing for us? Man, it's going to make my last uh, answer sound <laughs> shitty, but I think this shit good, good. Yeah, I mean, I don't get them, but shit, <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> with me. Get him out, you know, I go buy me some, <laughs> goddamn. I, oh, get, boy. I get nigga, nigga 50 for the hunt show, but I ain't <laughs> knocking it, but it make my last sound kind of crazy, but food is a different thing. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what do you think about, uh, what do you think about, um, let me see, what's another one that I had in mind? What do you think about, um, uh, <laughs> the typical income tax come. Let's go ahead and blow some income tax money on some stuff. You know what that stuff is. Yeah. And we're gonna flip it, and we're gonna. Woo, woo, woo. Is it a good investment or a bad investment? Bad investment. <laughs> it's a bad investment because you know what I'm saying. This the thing about that. Let's go on and take this and do this. That mean you sound new. Yeah. Cause the nigga that's already doing it, he ain't using no income tax to do it. Yeah. So if you finna use some shit you been waiting to get at the end of the year to flip some shit, nine times out of ten you ain't been doing it. Yeah. So you probably lose. I already, I already. You probably lose that investment. You know what I'm saying? Next question. Stripping, is it a good profession or a bad profession? If you single... I don't. I say like some niggas don't give a shit about the old lady stripping, but I mean I guess if you single or you got some type of determination on your mind, then you know I don't really like my ladies exploited like that. Well, I'ma say it like this: I don't really think that my real ladies would even do that. But if you doing that, you know what I'm saying? I don't knock you, you do what you do. But shit, I wouldn't have my daughter or my sister or my old lady in that bit. Yeah. At all. <laughs> but, you know, it's a profession for everything. Somebody got to be a trash man. Somebody got to shake their ass, right? <laughs> shit. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> and, then, and then last but not least, last but not least, child support. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Both. Both. It's a good thing for deadbeats, mother or father. I think everybody go through a spill, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes most ladies are impatient as a motherfucker, but sometimes it'll be niggas really out there killing themselves, trying to figure out a way, you know what I'm saying, to make sure that child solidified or whatever. But sometimes a mother get impatient put them people in your life and the reason I can say vice versa is because my oldest son I raised him by my goddamn self I never asked for nothing because I'm a dude I fed him I clothed him I did everything but later on in life yeah she got hit with them 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 situations oh baby see you put the fuck in her life in her life right now <laughs> 
<laughs> and the nigga 24. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really. And, and, and you know why them people got put in their life, bro? Just to be honest with you. It ain't had shit to do with me need nothing. Yeah. But one day, I'm going to have to... Well, not now. He grown. But one day at the time, I was going to have to put myself in position to let my son get to know who she is. So if I raise my son, he 24 years old. And the first time she came into the picture was when he was seven. I picked him up when he was three months. She never came back. She popped up when he was seven. So I wasn't just going to send my son off with no stranger. That's why the paperwork came into place. Yo. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. But I ain't need none of that shit, bro. This shit was like cigarette money, man. Yo. Mm, that I, shit. I already, I already. Where can people find you, Mr. Jim, on your social media sites? Man, on my, my Instagram is N-Y-S-T-A-G-I-N. It's only one Mr. N-Y-S-T-A-G-I-N. Instagram, he gonna pop up. Uh, Facebook, M Y S T A G I N, you know, pop up. Twitter, same thing. If you're looking for the music, all platforms, Jack. It, it, it's some shit you ain't heard of, this shit on. So everything you didn't heard of and everything you ain't heard of, Mr. Jen on this shit, Jack. So you, you know what I mean? You can reach me on all that. I read it, I read it. And that's what I always do, man. We tell a lot of fans, man, out there, man, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you come in, hit that notification bell so that way, you know what I'm saying, you're always alerted anytime we drop something new on the Chase That Bag podcast. All right. Mr. Jen, it's been an absolute pleasure, man, to sit down and chop it up with a legend, man. A legend after Woodtown himself, Mr. Motherfucking Jen. Yeah, ugh. <laughs> All right, Jack. Yeah, well, it's been an absolute honor and a pleasure, Mr. Jen. I appreciate you. Likewise. And as we always do, you know what we do, baby? We chase that bag, bitch. Ugh. Bye.